Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. It's episode number 335 for February 18th, 2014. So great to have you here. My name's Robbie Ferguson. And I'm Kelsey Jensen. Kelsey Jensen, welcome Woo. to the show. Thank you very much for having me. So, just, oh, no. so coming up in the newsroom, the European Court of Justice Justice says that websites can link freely to, avail- to, av- to freely available con- content without the permission of the copyright holder. Steam brings in more than 530 games to Linux in its first year on the platform. The anonymous marketplace Silk Road 2 says it has been hacked, resulting in the loss of all its customers' bitcoins. Ouch. Another one of the Back to the Future's tech products is coming to market, and just in time to mar- for Marty to travel to 2015. Sweet. All right, to celebrate Ontario's Family Day this week, my sons are going to be hosting a very special tutorial for you. They're going to be showing you a short feature tonight uh, to teach you a cool way to turn your handwriting into an actual true type font compatible with Windows, Linux, Mac. Uh, so prepare for the cutest thing ever. Get ready for it. We've also got your viewer questions to answer too. Uh, so much time, so little to do. Wait a minute, strike that, flip it, reverse it. Thank you. It's going to be a great show. Don't go anywhere. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Starring Sasha Dermatis. Hillary Rumble. Krista Wells. Kid. And your host, Robbie Ferguson. This is my brother Liam. Hi, Zach. On today's show, we are going to learn how to turn our handwriting into a font. That's awesome, Zach. Thanks. Mm. On episode 102, Daddy looked at the soft. <gasps> I was just a little baby this time. <laughs> So today I'm going to show you how to do it. It used to be called Font Capture, but now it has a new address. Cat5.tv slash TTF. Check this out. All you have to do is scroll down here and press print template. Daddy, then click daddy, here. Daddy, 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 daddy. Now all you have to do is print that. Now comes the fu- fun part. All you have to do is fill in the blanks. This is so easy, even a grown-up could do it. That sounds super easy. Boy, oh boy, he's distracting. You didn't say drop. Thanks, Liam. Here's some weird characters I never even seen before. Do I see it? So close to being finished. At the end, you just put your name in the big box. Sweet, well done. Now you just hand it to your daddy and he would I scan it for you. The water. Wow. It's all scanned, ready to go. Let's make this font. Go to the bottom of the page. See this button 
that says complete template, click on that. Now all you have to do is scroll down and then press scan and save template. Scroll down again and then press upload template. I want penguin. Now just follow the prompts. Fill in the font name and the copyright and then browse to upload. Click upload and you're done. Now wait about one minute. I can't wait that long. Whoa, this is amazing. It's my handwriting. Now download the font, save it to your computer, and then you're good to go. It would cost you $10, but keep this in mind. Some of that money goes to support Category 5 Technology TV. That's awesome! Thanks for watching Zach Tech. I hope you learned some cool things. I would see you next time. Bye bye! This is Category 5 Technology TV, episode number 335. Great to see you. Thanks to the boys for putting that together for us for Family Day this week. Lots and lots of fun. Hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, to, tonight, I will encourage you to get over to our mobile website. It's m.cat5.tv. Just scan that code with your QR reader, and that'll bring up our mobile site with live audio streaming, video streaming, on-demand video, Ooh. photos, which, incidentally, we've been adding photos like crazy to the photo gallery, so make sure you check that out m.cat5.tv Yes, and Category5.tv is a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Cat5.tv slash TPN and the International Association of Internet Broadcasters Cat5.tv TV slash IAIB Well done. She got through the uh, Internet uh, International Association of Internet Broadcasters web URL. Woo! <laughs> Pretty good for a beginner. <laughs> First night on. Uh, before we get talking about Kelsey Jensen and what brought her here tonight, uh, make sure you check out our Category 5 merch store. Check out this awesome shirt. It's so cool. Silk screened, my friend. Somebody said, did you stick one of the stickers on it? No, this is silk screened. Look at that. Two color silk screen. Real good quality shirt that is made uh, in ethical ways. I don't know how else to say it. I don't we, know either. Well, they, no slave labor involved. That's, that's and, a good thing. And uh, I think that's a really good thing. So check out our shop. It is uh, simply shop.category5.tv. If you received a sticker, perhaps an 8x10 photograph of the crew, uh, personally autographed business cards, whatever swag you've picked up from our online merch store, uh, make sure you get in there, shop.category5.tv. Please post your review so that people who are checking it out uh, will know what other people think of the products that are there. So. Yes. It's a very good idea. Kelsey, it's so nice to have you here. Oh, thank you. Thanks for, for being with us tonight. Kelsey, of course, is the newest member of the Category 5 team. And uh, what brings you here? What's uh, What's gotten you interested in something like Category 5? Oh, well, I just I heard about it from Hillary, and it looked like a really cool thing to do. So I decided, well, why not? It looks like a very fun thing, and I'm glad to be part of that. Cool. Have you ever been on TV before? No, I have never been on TV before. What about international TV? No. Nothing. Worldwide TV? No. No. Nothing like that? Nothing like that. Not to scare you or anything, but guys, <laughs> let's bring up the viewer location map. Oh, no. Because <laughs> we want to see where everybody is viewing from tonight. So go over to our website, category5.tv, click on about, and then viewer location map. Let's oh see my. where you're all from. Oh, wow. There you go. Oh, okay. That's pretty good. All right. So, all right, here we are over here in Canada. Up that in Ontario. Nice Let's see. Place. Is anybody up here in, in, in Barrie? Where are we? There's Where's Sudbury. Barry's down there. Oh, way down here, and I can't even see it. There's so many people around there. Okay, here we go. No, there's only a couple. Oh, there, up there. Okay. Right there. Yeah, right there's there. there's two of you. There's two of us. Well, one, one of them is us. Yes. I guess, because we're here right now. Yeah. Uh, but who's the other We've got people south of us in Toronto. Oh, yeah. Nice to have you here. Uh, all around there. We've got lots of U.S. Lots in the U.S. Lots in the U.S. Is this making you nervous? Uh, just a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> West coast, east coast. Uh, yeah. We got you covered. Oh, Everywhere we got in between. BC. BC we got for sure. Some 
overseas. Let's let's go overseas here, folks. Oh my. <laughs> okay. Uh, Nigeria. Yeah, we got Whoa. you. Nice to see you. Watching from Lagos and uh, Cameroon. Let's go a little north. Oh, got the British people coming. Ireland and uh, United UK. Kingdom. Belgium. Germany. We can't even see. I have to click, folks, because there's just so many of you that I can't, I can't even see without, without that's actually great. clicking. That's so really cool. that's our viewer location map. That kind of shows where people are watching from. Um, how cool is that? That's so really cool. we love having you all joining us tonight. Thanks for joining us. We're going to uh, encourage you also to register on our website, category5.tv. Nice to see our chat room. I see Masterminds, PC Careman from Ireland as well. Good to see you. Uh, Masterminds. Oh, I said that. Yeah, you did. Jot, Sammy G, TikTok. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Rob Gore. Love Guest 3722 is oh. also joining us from Ireland. Wow. Maggie is from Northern Ireland. It's interesting that a lot of our viewership is apparently from Ireland tonight. And overseas. That's so nice to see you. Oh, what about Mars? What about Mars? We have to, we, can't ever, forget to, we can't forget to mention Mars. Yeah, we were talking before the show. You're interested in a particular genre of novel. Perhaps yeah. could it be science fiction? Yeah, I um, like science fiction What a book lot. are you reading right now? Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. There you go. So, pff, fantastic. All right. Uh, have you ever used Linux before? I have never used Linux before. Have you heard of it? I have heard of it, yes. Okay. That's Any stories it. to do with Linux? You. Oh, my um, my friend somehow accidentally got Linux once. She. Uh, I'd like to meet the technician who accidentally <laughs> put Linux on their computer for them. I don't oh, know. Oh, look at that. She we just Linux, wiped though. out Windows and yeah. put Linux on it. Does she like it? Um, apparently, yeah. For like the first little while, she was kind of confused and like, wait, <laughs> what? What is this? <laughs> okay, so now we know what to do. We need to actually just install Linux. Somebody brings in a computer for any kind of repair. Yeah. Just install Linux. Of course. And uh, show them where the start menu is, applications. Let them go. And uh, let them learn uh, learn their way around. And I guess... Yeah. There you go. There's that'll that'll give them a story as yeah, they go back. Uh, what kinds of tech are you into personally? Um, a lot of computer tech. Um, mm -hmm. I like I like computers. I think they're cool. Uh, cell phones. I like my cell phone. Um, the smartphone. <laughs> smartphones. Yes, yeah, smartphones. Android are great. or iOS. Android. Notice oh. I didn't say Windows Mobile because I know that's not an option. <laughs> no, my friend uses Windows Mobile. It's not good. And does she love it? No. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, you, you've done some broadcasting before behind the scenes. Yes. What kind of stuff was involved in that? Um, a lot of switcher boards, um, audio, a bit of audio, a bit of graphics yeah. working. Um, that's cool. So are you interested then in our Wirecast digital uh, switcher? That's pretty cool. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, eh? I've never seen that. I've never, yeah. Takes the hardware and puts virtualizes it, in it all, computer. puts it into software, and makes it uh, all computerized. Which is it's really pretty brilliant. Could, so. could, it's very useful. Um, other than that, um, Category 5 is pretty new to you. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that you know Hillary. That's yep. awesome. Hillary, yes. of course, Hillary Rumble, one of our co-hosts here on the show. Um, interesting connection there because you and I didn't meet through Hillary. No. So that's that's kind of neat that you just yeah. happen to know her and, and have actually worked with her yes. before. So yes. do you work, uh, like, do you sign as well like Hillary um, does? Or? Yeah, I, I'm not fluent in sign language. Yeah. I know... I know enough to have like a basic conversation with someone, okay. but I couldn't. I couldn't do like a whole big social conversation. Okay. So, cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Uh, what What do you find exciting about Category Five? Um, just the information that it can bring to ev anyone. It's all over the world, and you know that map. Uh, as much as it was frightening, it was also really <laughs> cool. <laughs> like I, I, like bringing it to people in Africa, and you know everywhere. It's pretty. It's pretty incredible. Everywhere in the world. Everywhere. We're pretty. We got you covered. Yeah. And if you're not watching from where you are, then you know we we do broadcast everywhere. So. Yeah. Which is um, pretty cool. Excellent. Well, it's incredibly nice to have you here. Yeah. Um, Kelsey has posted a bio on our website, category5.tv. Um, so get on over there, click on about, and uh, you'll see the team there. And you'll be able to read up a little bit more about uh, about Kelsey and her involvement here on the show. And, of course, our bio pages are growing as well. We've been adding some photo galleries and, mm -hmm. and interesting things there. So uh, make sure you check back quite often. So, All right. Well, we do have a fair number of viewer questions um, tonight. And uh, I, I do want to 
try to pay special attention to the chat room. So chat room, please do feel free to send us some questions. Um, if you've got an email for us, you can email us live at category5.tv and we'll try to get you on the air. Um, in the meantime, we'll jump right into the news uh, because uh, I want to get, you know, cover as many questions this evening as we possibly can. So, Alrighty. All right, you ready for it? Yep, let's do it. Take her away. All right, so here are the top stories from the Category5.tv newsroom. The European Court of Justice says that websites can link freely to freely available content without the permission of the copyright holder. The court's decision came after a dispute in Sweden between journalists and a web company that had posted links on its site to online news articles. A Swedish court had asked the EU court to consider whether it's br this broke copyright law. The position would be different for links that bypass a paywall. Technology lawyer Susan Hall said if the decision had gone the other way, it would have, it would have broken the internet. It makes sense, right? But uh, I wonder where is the fine line and who creates that line mm -hmm. to say, because uh, I think about immediately when I hear this story, I think about the Pirate Bay mm -hmm. and how they have gone through so many legal problems because they are linking to content that is potentially viol in violation of copyrights, mm -hmm. but all they're doing is linking to the, the stuff that exists out there. Right. They're not actually hosting it. They're not distributing it. They're simply linking to it. So where is that line where the courts can say, no, it's okay to link to stuff as long as you're not hosting it, but then turn around in America and say the opposite to companies like the Pirate Bay? Not that what they're doing is right or what anyone else is doing is wrong. It's just an interesting mm -hmm. thought process, I guess, yeah. to, to think. So you know, where is that line? Where do you think that that line should be? Um, get into our chat room. Let us know. Uh, what you think on that could be a, a bit of a dangerous thing for the courts to I, I think we're treading on some interesting grounds right now because yep. these things have never been discussed in the courts before these things have never been uh, an issue before because the technology was never there so if somebody posts something and I link to it am I personally responsible for having linked to it yeah dangerous I, I, like so many thoughts going through my head right now because I also think about how we category five had to turn off mm -hmm. um, certain features of our website oh, really? that were allowing people because we like to build the community and, and give you guys access to do whatever you like but uh, for example we had to close down indexing of our chat logs right which is all fine and good but originally we had hoped that our chat logs could be a part of our website and they are, you can click on them, you can read them, it's pretty cool, but we had to remove them from our Google indexing and all of our search engine indexing because if somebody went into the chat room and posted a link to the Pirate Bay oh, or okay. to something s slightly illegal or possibly gray area, mm -hmm. a link to a download file, we would actually get hurt for that. I, either Google would pull us from the search results or we would get fined or whatever, so that's a, you know, that's whole other thing so where is that line folks? yeah we've got countries where you can get fined and jailed for it too i don't need that <laughs> quit posting illegal things in the chat logs exactly nobody does that no. we gotta be safe yes. gotta be safe look at this cute little guy Aww. <laughs> and in 12 months since its initial stable release the number of games available on linux through steam has increased substantially based on numbers listed by the steam linux store page it may be may as much as a mammoth 900%, jumping from a mere 50 titles at launch to more than 530 today. After spending much of late 2012 in beta, the popular games distribution platform was formally released on Linux, Linux just one year ago, on February 14th, 2013. That's amazing. That's pretty cool. I remember when Steam first came to Linux a year ago, and it was, you know, there weren't a lot of games and people were complaining. People just, and we just kept saying, just hold off. And I think I said it on the show, just hold off. You're going to see them start to build this up. Yeah. 530 games that's, that's is incredible. Pretty good. That's it's incredible. That's groundbreaking. And so Linux now is a gaming platform. That was one of the things that was holding people back from making that switch to Linux. Right. You know, well, what about games? Steam. Steam. 530 games, folks. That's pretty good. Brilliant. 
The anonymous online marketplace Silk Road 2 has says it has been hacked, resulting in the loss of all its customers' bitcoins. Ouch! That's not good. Oh, boy. <laughs> An administrator for the site said hackers had manipulated computer code, enabling them to withdraw $2.7 million, or 1.6 million euros, worth of virtual currency. It follows similar attacks on two exchanges that trade on bitcoins earlier in the week. Silk, no- Silk Road 2 is known for selling drugs and other illegal items. The original Silk Road site was shut down by the FBI in 2013, but those behind it say they would start a new site, and shortly afterwards, Silk Road 2 appeared online. Hmm. You know what? It, it goes without saying that Silk Road in itself, Silk Road 2 as well, mm-hmm. very shady as far as what they're selling and, and exchanging Bitcoins. Bitcoins are an interesting thing because they are anonymous, and you're able to you know, buy and sell Bitcoins mm-hmm. anonymously. And what what they're selling is you know whatever. That's not the point. the The point is is that people are putting their money into this currency, and what's to stop somebody from up and? I mean, there there's a lot of there's got to be security there. There has to yeah. be a lot of security. But we're hearing more and more about this. Maybe it's just the popularity of it and the growth of it. And uh, but to have all, can you imagine all of your customers' I'd money? Be- I'd be stolen. I'd be You'd be pretty steamed. Yeah. Speaking of steam, <laughs> holy cow. That's kind of crazy. Yeah. This is exciting. Woo. Cool sneakers. <laughs> In the second Back to the Future movie, Marty McFly's favorite self-lacing high-top shoes were all the rage when he traveled to the f- far into the future, 2015. Back in 2011, Nike MAGs brought the futuristic looks of Marty McFly to the feet of the sneaker collectors and movie fans alike. But there was just one problem. They were lacking the key to the future. Well, now it seems like the iconic power laces will actually arrive in time for Marty to travel to 2015. Nike designer Tinker Hatfield confirmed this at a recent appearance where he said, Are we going to see power laces in 2015? To that, I say yes. Hmm. Awesome. Would you buy them? Um. Seriously? I'm not sure. They're a little 80s They're, futuresque. Yeah. But They're for the cool for the nostalgic movie yeah. buff, that's pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah. I want to see how they work. Yeah. Because in the movie, they're like, <laughs> you know, they're like better than Velcro. And then I want to get some for my kids because you never hear the end of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't tie my laces. I right? can't do the Velcro. Well, the Velcro's fine. It's the laces. The boots and the laces are always dragging behind them. Oh, yeah. So, sure. bring this on. Better than Velcro. They can just do it. What do you think? Press. Yeah. I think, I'd be, I think it'd be a good, good idea for Garby, kids. Garby, Jot, would you guys wear these? That's what I want to know. Yeah. There you go. That's yeah, it. That's it. So, you, you wrap up and... All right. Well, you can get the full stories at category5.tv slash newsroom. The category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions by our our community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of an uh, on-air mention, please email at newsroom at category5.tv. For the category5.tv newsroom, I'm Kelsey Jensen. Thanks, Kelsey. Well done. Just so you know, Jot says as long as we send them to him, he's going to wear them. Okay. <laughs> so, good answer. That's good it. answer. Yeah. Arthur Dent, great to see you. Anybody hey. joining us in the chat room for the first time tonight? Anybody there? Anyone? I'm sure I think I see. I think I saw one. I think I saw Sammy, Sammy G. G. New user. Sammy G, where are you from? Joining us tonight for the first time live on the air. Nice to see you. Nice to have uh, everybody joining us in the chat room. We're going to get to your questions. And uh, if you have any questions and we miss you. Now, Kelsey, this is her first night. Yes. And uh, so she's learning the ropes and, and there's a lot to take in, I think. How is it? I'm huh. pretty I'm pretty organized, eh? Yeah, it's so pretty good. You're pretty good. We laid yeah. everything out. We got yep. it. Good job. Um, but if, if for some reason either her or I miss your question, just uh, double click on our names. Um, she's Kelsey J. I'm Robbie F. And uh, just double click on us in the chat room and we'll and that will open a private message and it will probably get our attention a little easier. Yeah, Sammy so. G from the Netherlands. The Netherlands. Oh. Great to see you, Sammy G. 
Thanks for joining us tonight. Eric1212 is joining us for the second time tonight. Nice to see you. Where are you from, Eric1212? Nice to see Hillary also joining us in the chat room to say hey. Good to see you. Good to see you. All right. Well, let's jump into viewer questions. Eric1212, I want to say shouts out. Um, just let us know where you're from, eh? Oh, Mastermind ZH. Uh, Sammy G is uh, is his better half. That's a good be- That's a good half to have. There you go. Nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, we'll get right into it. All right. Thanks for sending in your questions, by the way. And again, our email address is live at category5.tv. All right. So our first question I've got up here is how can I hook the internet and Wi-Fi on one computer? Internet and Wi-Fi. You know, it's an interesting question. Ethernet. Ethernet, yeah. Ethernet. That's what I was thinking as I was saying internet. Uh, Eric1212 is joining us from Guelph, Ontario. Oh. Nice to see you. I've got family there. Uh, Good to have you here. San Diego, California from Kek Kek. So, this is, who was this asking? JP. 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 Hey. Nice to see you. Um, JP, I, I think what's interesting about the question is you don't really think about it when, it, you know, Wi-Fi or Ethernet, but to connect both at the same time, well, why would that be a problem? What's kind of interesting, here's what happened. At one point in technology, it was realized that if I'm connected to a Wi-Fi internet connection with my laptop computer, that's using extra battery life. And then I plug in my Ethernet cable. It should be understood by the computer that now I want it to switch to Ethernet because I no longer need the Wi-Fi signal. But because of your question, it sounds like that's a problem for you. Like you need both. And that's fine. It's two, two Internet connections, two connections to various networks. You can have one as a LAN and one as a WAN. And that's perfectly fine. What happens, though, is the, the operating system, say Windows, didn't have the capability or it was really tough to figure out how to set it up. Windows 7, Windows 8 make it a little easier by setting up uh, the priorities of your networks. But it's still uh, what happens is, is that when you plug in the Ethernet, it's going to either stay on Wi-Fi, which would be the default in Windows, or it would, uh, it would turn off Wi-Fi and turn on Ethernet. That's you know, the prioritization of Windows 8, for example. So companies like HP and and other laptop manufacturers brought out uh, and and said, okay, we're going to fix this. We're going to make it so that if you plug in Ethernet, it will turn off your Wi-Fi. That's what you want. That's what we want. So they set it up, and that's exactly what it does. So you're on uh, Wi-Fi, you plug in Ethernet, it turns off your wireless adapter. Pain in the bum if you want it to stay on. So go into your BIOS... And you should see some settings there, and it's different per manufacturer, and we don't have specifications about your laptop, but there are settings to, in fact, set it to remain on. It's a fix that they put in place so that it would automatically turn off, but you can turn that off in your BIOS so that it will continue to work. So good luck. Report back to us. Let us know, JP, uh, how it goes. All right. Uh, And there's your history lesson for today. (laughs) <laughs> why tech does this why does it do this <laughs> so annoying yes well <laughs> our next question is from andy his daughter is trying to play a movie from her laptop onto a tv but okay. there's no sound any tips to get the right settings or to the root of the problem hmm thanks for the question andy um okay so we're using a laptop mm-hmm. we've got it connected to the tv so there's one of two. The first thing I'm going to ask is what kind of connection you're using. We don't we don't know that. Um, so if it's D sub, which is the standard VGA, I'm going to bring it up on my screen here so I can show you what I'm talking about. D sub. Here we go. So this is a D sub port. SVGA, okay? So if that's what you're doing, that carries video only. So that is just a video signal. It's meant for an external monitor. It will work with your TV. It will take the signal and put it up on the big screen, but there's no audio. 
So in that case, you need a, uh, I guess, a, is it an eighth inch phone, headphone jack, uh, male to, to male? And you would have to plug it into the headphone jack of your laptop. This is going at it old school. Uh, plug it into the headphone jack of the laptop and then into the line in on your television. We'd assume that you have that. Um, and then it would work because you have D sub for video, SVGA for video, and analog audio going out to the TV. Alternatively, you could put a set of speakers on your laptop or something and make it sound better. Um, if it's um, HDMI, HDMI typically carries both audio and video from your laptop to the television. Let's look at what HDMI looks like just so that we can compare. Just quickly here. There's an HDMI port. There you go. Okay. So if it's that kind of port, and they're very, very tiny, almost the size of, of a USB, then uh, that's going to carry audio and video, but your laptop may default to the speakers that are built in, and you may have to go into your audio settings and tell it to send over HDMI. So your playback device would have to be set. That makes sense. You bring up the playback devices by clicking, right click on your um, speaker icon down in the bottom right of your screen down by the clock and go to playback devices. You'll see one of the playback devices is set as your default. That's your built in your speakers. Um, and there's another device for HDMI. That's to send the audio over your uh, HDMI to the TV. So you need to switch it back and forth depending on what you want to use. Then you need to close your video player, reopen it, and it will come up on the TV with audio and video. So. So that would be the two answers based on the two most common kinds of connectors that you're going to have on a laptop. Um, if that doesn't help, let me know. Uh, pop us another email or get us in the chat room live. Um, that would be great. Thanks for the question, Andy. I hope it helps. All righty. So the next question is from Al Peck. Um, hey, Al. He, um, he, he, he put in a question a couple weeks ago. Oh, yeah. And... And it has you suspected it was a memory leak, um, but he was it was possibly informative. Oh, what? the the router uh, software that you're creating, the Bash like script. I think so. Okay. Uh, what I was really what I was really looking for was how to use slash interpret information displayed from such utilities as top. And the ad additional insight you can pr provide to, to troubleshoot a resource bottleneck issue is greatly appreciated. Huh, I love this guy. That was a very kind way to say, you was wrong, Robbie. <laughs> it wasn't what I meant, which is cool. All right, I'm going to do something that I never, ever do here, my man. But it has to be done. <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay. This is the manual for top. And I want you to do this because I could tell you all the answers, but I want you to figure this out. I'm scrolling down, scrolling down, page down, page down, page down. Here's what I want. Maybe not quite. Not quite. See, because, uh, okay, there's the fields, code command. Almost there. CPU usage. Yeah. See, there's, there you go. Flags, GID, group, mem. NI, the nice value, and DRT. So this explains what all of the values mean. So now we know the nice value of the task is a negative nice value, meaning higher priority, whereas a positive nice value means lower priority. So this tells us what NI means in the top uh, application. And you can go through, because some of them admittedly are a little bit, you know, what a, a PID we might know. Um, some of the other stuff we may not, like SHR. Okay, well, what is that? Oh, it's shared memory size. Okay, now it makes sense, but what does that mean? And, of course, the manual goes into really good detail of what that actually means. So, I never say, I mean, I, tr I don't really tend to say read the manual, but in this particular case, it's going to give you a lot of insight into the application itself. Top shows us uh, what applications are using resources on our computer. Okay, great. But again, it's kind of confusing when you see NI, VERT, RES, SHRS. Well, what does all that mean? That's where the man pages are going to help. 
I mentioned it on that particular episode that I recommend you try HTOP, which you may need to install with apt-get. And I didn't get into a lot of details. You're right, because I, I maybe, maybe I did misunderstand the question a little bit. You're asking more how to use these applications, top, HTOP, versus how to fix the memory leak that you were experiencing. So I didn't really get into that. It's more than just a colorized, beautiful version of top. So let's not get it wrong. This is a, a more robust as far as I'm concerned, uh, in my opinion, a more robust version of top. Notice the hotkeys that, that come with it. Got help, setup, search, filter, tree, sort by, huh? nice, nice plus, nice minus, and nice plus, so you can actually increase and decrease the priority of a task, kill a task, or quit. So, for example, I can hit F6 to change my sort order, and you'll see over here now I've got a menu that I can actually select, say I want to select by niceness, how nice are my applications. Now I haven't set any niceness on my applications on this particular computer, it's more common to a server uh, or something where you're doing some encoding or something, but you know, sort by user and, and so on and so forth. And you can actually scroll left and right, you can hold in your, right, and you can move around that, uh, this text-based interface. But I love that you've got more to it. But again, you're stuck with these short forms that it's really tough to know what it means unless you've looked it up. So we type man space, eight, uh, man space top will tell you, H top two. But the top one will give you the list of the particular, you know, what those things mean. And uh, I would say, you know, if you really want to, copy it, paste it into an image and print it out, make it look nice, whatever and uh, keep it above your computer, so. All right. Cool. Well, we got a message back from JP. Hey, JP. Um, in Windows, I got to disable Wi-Fi to use wired, but in Linux, turn off one and use the other. So did it not have to do with your, your BIOS feature? Because that's a BIOS option, so it's, it's agnostic of what operating system you're using. Doesn't matter, it's going to take effect regardless because it actually disables the Wi-Fi so let me know all right thank you very much for the questions folks this is category 5 technology TV our website is down there triple w dot category 5 dot TV my name is Robbie Ferguson I'm Kelsey Jensen nice to have you here yeah thanks for sending in your questions folks yep and you can email us more at live at category 5 dot TV right. keep them coming so our next question, uh, I've just got my dad, this one is from Zabada, Zabada. Hey, yeah. Uh, I've just got my first, my dad, my dad is first ever laptop. He was about an hour away in London, so it can be a pain to get to him while, when he has computer questions. I'm a Linux user usually, but Manjaro or you, you, or whatever, or that. <laughs> a bunch him, of distros? Manjaro, Ubuntu. 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 It's a South African word. It means um, unity. Um, oh, okay. Uh, for all of mankind, kind of thing. So cool. Add it to your vocabulary. All right, but for him, I had to <laughs> install Windows Seven, and as I know, Team VR works perfectly for remote help. I really want to move him to Linux, but not sure any remote service is as good as Team Viewer. I know you can get Team Viewer to run on Linux with with Wine, but it is horrible fu fudge, and I and to use and wanted something native. Please tell me if you have, if you have any de ideas on what I can use. Okay. First off, okay, do you want, well, okay, first, when she said Zabada, of course, immediately, you know, Zabadi, Zabada, so that's how I think, it. now that's how I'm going to hear your name, awesome, um, you're right, and you're wrong, so you're right, TeamViewer is awesome, you're wrong, because TeamViewer also works awesome in Linux, Ooh. seriously, okay, do I have it? Let's see. Uh, da -dee -dee -dee. Team Viewer. I've got. I probably have an older version. There you go. Is it's easy breezy. Oh, oh look, there's my username and password. Quick, I better change that. Everybody's gonna start loading up my computer. Ah, oh, change password. Who's connecting? <laughs> there. Create a new random password. That's live television. So anyway, as you can see, uh, TeamViewer loads up just fine in Linux. Yes, it uses Wine, but their installer does it all seamlessly. 
So you don't have to go through a lot of hoops, to be honest with you. Uh, masterminds in the chat room reiterating Team Viewer works great. Does somebody have Team Viewer installed on their Linux machine that I, from a Linux machine, could actually remote into? Private message me um, real quick with your uh, with your credentials, and I'll just connect in, and, and we'll just show Zabada that. Uh, how how about that? Private message me. Does that sound good? Ah. Oh. Good thing there's a little bit of a delay. They're actually trying to connect into my computer. Are Take they? over the show. Take over the show. <laughs> <laughs> you send me your credentials there, anybody who's got TeamViewer working. Because we're... So I'm in Linux. I'm on Point Linux, which is Debian 7. And uh, and it works fantastically well. Really does. I use it to connect into all different systems, uh, including Linux. In fact, um, I have a gentleman who I provide support for. And I was talking to him on the phone today. Um, he's he must be 87 years old. We've talked about him here on the show before, and I got him switched over to Linux, and uh, that was you know a few years ago now. And when we did that, one of the things that we had to consider is how do I provide support to this guy? He lives far away, and how do I continue to help him out because he can't make the drive to Barry every time he needs right. help. And TeamViewer is the perfect solution. It works great. He's running Ubuntu Linux. I'm running. Point Linux, Debian based, and it works flawlessly for supporting this guy. Now I'm actually, <laughs> I'm actually now I'm remoted into Mastermind's computer. Thank you, Mastermind, for the uh, the connection, and we're actually seeing us in a lowered um, quality rate. But you can see that I can actually take control of Mastermind's computer here, no problem, uh, and it works flawlessly. And I am, of course, in Linux. What are you in? This uh, you're in Chrome, obviously. Uh, what's your operating system that you're running there? Mastermind. He's going to let us know in the chat room. Yep. I don't want to click around too much because we're live, but uh, but there you have it. Oh, and he's uh, changing the view for us here. There you go. And we've got an animated background. Beautiful. So it works fabulously well, and I would you know highly recommend that you check out Team Viewer. Give it a try. It's free for personal use, so you really can't go wrong. Uh, it's a support application. It has the ability to create an account. And when you do that, so for me, for example, if I have TeamViewer on s certain computers, I can actually create an account, add those computers to my account, a la the old log me in style, for example, uh, which is no longer free. And then I can just log into my account from any computer, be it Linux, Windows, probably Mac. I don't know. I don't have a Mac, but um, platform doesn't really matter. Linux is one of them, and I can connect to any of those computers. doesn't matter what platform it's on. doesn't matter where in the world it is. I mean, Mastermind, I just connected into his system. We were watching, even though it degraded the quality of the video, because it's not for watching video, it's for providing tech support. Halfway across the world to the Netherlands, we were controlling his computer, and it, you know, I created a new tab there, and it was instant and everything. So it, the support aspect of it is fantastic. Um, and and for you to be able to provide support to them, was it his dad? Is yeah, right? his dad. Um, is is you know it's going to work just fine, and it's super super easy. You just tell them to open Team Viewer, give me the uh, the password because you probably will already have their username, or add them to your own account, and then you can just take control anytime you like. How do you like that? You don't even have to get them to. Guess Harry. Nice to see you. Thank you so much for providing credentials. Uh, Masterminds beat you to the punch. And, uh, and I think that was uh, a fair enough demonstration. So, Oh, Eric1212 is a joker. <laughs> Wants to send me a Mac for my birthday. Well, Macs are pretty good. What are the advantages to Mac? No viruses? I don't know. Good hardware for the price? Well, you've got better, anything better than Windows Movie Maker. Yeah. I don't know. I think um, I, I've had this discussion where somebody said to me, and this is at work, because we sell computers, right? Mm -hmm. And they're looking, they're looking at a seven, $800 computer. And they say, and this could be you, you're having this thought. Um, okay, I've got, a, I've, I've got Windows XP. I have no choice. I have to replace my computer because April 8th, Windows XP is no more. So do I buy this one for 800 bucks, or do I just go to a Mac? Because I've heard Macs are good. And the, the, the me, I want to laugh out loud. Now, the professional, 
<laughs> the professional in me says, no, let's give this some thought here. You know, let's let's think more. Um, Joe in, uh, I, I'm guessing, New Hampshire says it's going to cost you more if you buy a Mac. Absolutely. So here's the fact. If you're looking at an $800 PC and a Mac. Yes. Apples to oranges. No pun intended. We need to do apples to apples. Okay. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's confusing. But if I'm going to spend $3,000 on a Mac, let's compare that to a $3,000 PC. Right. Now you're going to realize, whoa, that is a crazy good PC. That thing is way faster than that Mac, possibly. It's got more memory. It's got more hard drive space. It's got SSD this and that. And it's the same money, but I'm probably going to get more for the PC if I'm going to spend that kind of money. So don't think, if I'm going to buy this $800 PC versus a two or $3,000 Mac, which is better, mm-hmm. well, obviously the two or $3,000 Mac is better than an $800 PC because it's cheaper. So it's wor- of worse quality. You get what you pay for. Exactly. Right? So give me that two or $3,000 PC, stick Linux on it so you no longer have to deal with viruses. Mm-hmm. Uh, malware. I get malware all the time on my Linux machine, and I laugh because I just close it, and it disappears forever. It's gone. I never have to deal with it. doesn't infect my system. doesn't take over my computer or start sending spam email. I just close it, and it's gone. It's not a bash of Mac, Mastermind. It's just the truth. you got to be real here, right? It's the truth. What can you do with the truth? Nothing. You you buy a two thousand dollar used car versus a you know fifty thousand dollar new car. Guess which one is gonna run better? It's the facts, right? So if you're gonna compare, compare apples to apples, apples to PCs. <laughs> hmm. This is really tough. <laughs> All right, so the next question, uh, this person, uh, PC Carman, oh. Carman, Car- PC Carman, PC Carman, took me a moment, all right, uh, he has a <laughs> Linux, and he would like to harden his Linux in the computer security world, he uses SGARD, but he came across Libra, uh, it's helpful, it helps, I found it helpful because it it collects unused IPs and sends them to a fake server in which their computer gets stuck for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I only used it because of internet flutters hitting my network. Maybe you could cover the hardened tool in Linux. Okay. What I'm going to suggest, if, if I'm following you all good here, PC Care Man, we're talking about Linux servers, possibly Linux workstations that are internet connected. Fact is, you, you need to have some form of good solid firewall. Why is that? Well, I run uh, a web server, obviously category5.tv is a co-located web server. And uh, that's just an example. So because it's internet connected, because we have a domain, because we're indexed in Google, we get hit like crazy. We had a DDoS attack uh, just last month and it actually took us down and I had to run across town and do a hard reboot and uh, you know that that can happen so then we reassess things and we say okay well what do we need to do I guarantee you a good starting point depending on what it is you're doing like are you hosting if you're hosting then I would look at proxying your DNS if you are not hosting it's just a computer uh, or a server that is not necessarily hosting websites then I would look at um, and I would look at this anyway, CSF, LFD, um, software. Let's bring it up. I'll post links for you. Anytime I mention stuff and put the links up on the, uh, on the screen, I'll actually uh, post those links in the show notes. And this is episode number 335. So you'll find those show notes on our website, category5.tv. CSF, config server firewall. Oh, config, <laughs> they've, config server, so this S is not for server, it's actually security. Config server, because that's a word, security and firewall. There you go. This script, I highly recommend giving it a go because it is basically an amazing front end for your IP tables. It's going to make it so that if somebody is attacking, like when we get hit with a DDoS attack, 
I can't sit there and block IP addresses because they're coming from a distributed denial of service that's all over the place and I'm getting hit by all these IPs and I don't know where they're coming from or where they're coming from next. CSF and LFD says, okay, that IP address is port scanning, block it. This one is doing that, block it. And you set up these rules and it does a really, really great job of automatically configuring your IP tables. So it's a big old bullet list. When you look at the site and you look for a download link and it's not very intuitive as far as finding it, you scroll down, there it is. Little tiny, tiny blurb that says download. The latest version of CSF can be found here, csf.tgz. Open her up and you'll see a folder there. You can extract that to your computer. Once you've extracted it and it's on your computer, you'll see uh, there's actually, well, there's an install file, a uh, sh file shell script let's see alphabetical Robbie it'll be an I obviously there it is so you can run that install.sh or if you read install.txt it'll give you the real quick nitty-gritty and first line says installation is quite straightforward it really is and you can copy and paste those five lines and you'll be good to go basically it removes the file if you've already downloaded it W gets a new <coughs> pardon me the newest version untars the file goes into the folder and then runs install.sh so we can do it also just by extracting from this folder and running that install.sh so once csf is installed follow the directions on their website really really simple and out of the box it's going to work fairly well you want to tweak it a little bit to make sure that uh, you know it works for you for example uh, on my server one of the things that i did is i wanted 404s to be monitored by csf so it monitors my Apache log so that I know if somebody, because one of the common attacks that we get on our web server is that s people try to hit scripts on our site. So those scripts don't exist. I don't run Joomla. I don't run WordPress on my, on my site or anything like that. So um, if they start hitting those scripts, I want them to generate 404 errors, and then I want to block them based on that. But what happens if Google is indexing our old website and then Google gets blocked. Well, then they're going to say, oh, your website's down. They're going to not lock us out. So we can actually set up um, basically ignore lists that will allow certain users, such as Google and Bing and indexers and bots and things that we do want to be able to get in. So CSF is very robust, very configurable. Check it out. That's my blurb. That's my endorsement. Configserver.com. Sounds like a good place to go. Really geeky. <laughs> really geeky, but it works well. All right, and he messaged us saying ref block, IMP, etc. Yeah, done. Perfect. Looks looks pretty good. All right, Joel and NH says hey, I Joel. have an eight. I have an XP machine that I need to convert. Okay. You need to convert. So we need to get Linux on there. Is that what we're talking about? I think so. Old XP machine. I was machine. thinking Arch, was originally thinking Mac Pup. Have you used Linux before? PC Careman says, uh, thanks for CSF. You're welcome. Hope that hope you like it. Hope you love it. It's free. Uh, have you used Linux before? I guess that's the real question. Because if you came to me and said, I, I'm running Windows XP, I need to switch over to Linux because my XP is running out and I don't want to have to buy a new computer with Windows 8, uh, what do I do? Well, right. I might recommend a different distro for you because you've never tried Linux. Mm -hmm because I want you to have something that's going to be easy to transition from Windows, for example. Right. When I started using Linux back in 1999, the distro that got me there was called Lindos. Lindos. So it was a play on Windows, but what was unique about it is that it really gave a feel that I was using Windows in the interface. The interface was very, very similar to Windows XP at the time. So I would recommend something like that for you. It, because you've used Linux before, it looks like Joe has used yep. Linux in the chat room. So uh, then you might try something a little more robust, and it really depends on your your tastes. And one of the fun things about Linux is there are so many different flavors, and you've heard it before. There are so many different versions that it's almost d daunting. So you almost just have to dive in. Just say to the chat room, you know, what do you recommend? People are saying, you know, try this, try that, um, and that's really a good way to go. But I think, you know, it's personal preference. It really is. I can't tell you what's good for you. But I can tell you what's good for me. It's Point Linux. Zorin OS is another recommendation TikTok has made that I really, really love. I love Zorin OS. It does not run well on my hardware, though. So Point Linux runs better on my, 
my hardware. Uh, Zorin OS may run just fine on yours, and in which case it's really, really good. Um, I do like Point Linux that it's uh, direct Debian 7 base, um, and uh, and they tend to lean to, they're still, it's stable, but they lean towards some of the testing stuff. So you get some of the bleeding edge stuff, but you don't lose the stability of, of a good, stable Linux operating system. Um, and there are, you know, many suggestions there in the chat room. And because you're in the chat room, I'll let you, I'll let them kind of take it. Rats is mentioning Q4 OS. It's a great um, new distro for somebody who's transitioning away from Windows XP into Linux because it feels a lot like Windows XP. But it is Linux, and it is pretty young, so you may need somebody to hold your hand a little bit to get you through. PC Careman says Zubuntu, which is an XU, Ubuntu, is fantastic. It's based on Ubuntu. This is a distribution that is probably one of the, if not the, most popular uh, Linux distribution in the world uh, because they really get it as far as package distribution and, and user support. Zubuntu is lighter weight, so it's going to run better than Ubuntu on your older hardware. Um, Lubuntu is another one that uh, feels quite a bit like uh, like Windows, but um, is lighter weight than Ubuntu. So see what I mean? There's a, a there's so many different things, so many different flavors, distributions, and it can be daunting. Yes. <laughs> so you know, look at screenshots and say which one is the prettiest, and then get in and and don't be afraid to ask questions. Get in here, get into our chat room, and ask us questions because we really encourage that and we love to receive your questions and try to help you so any further questions for us folks we're just about out of time um, yep i've got i've got nothing over here perfect look at that it's like we planned it i know it's like this is pre-recorded and we edited it down Whoa. to one hour it actually took four hours to record <laughs> not really Wow, they're just making up Linux flavors in the chat room. Guys, don't confuse the dude. They're just naming off every Linux that they can think of. <laughs> I like the Ubuntu based <coughs> pardon me, the Ubuntu based stuff because of that support uh, platform. They've got really good support. Um, there's a really great community backing up Ubuntu. PC Linux OS, that's one that uh, I loved and uh, is still around. So Cool. Well, lots asking if I liked the show. It was a great. Yeah, did it you was, have fun? I had lots of fun today. Can't believe an hour has gone by. I know. I was so quick. We've we do have some new people that are joining us tonight. Um, yeah. I've got your names here. I want to give shouts out to VVC five fifty five. Want to take the next one? Uh, Jim Taylorville. Jim Taylorville. Jim Taylorville. Like he's so popular, they named the Ville after him. I know. Nice. That's pretty Way cool. to go, Jim. Woo. Nice to have you here. Also, Maggie joining us. I also want to give shouts out to our viewers tonight. Uh, we see you in Huddersfield, UK, Verona, Italy. Nice yeah. to see you. Uh, Nanchang, China, uh, Greencastle, US. Yeah, look at it. We're just oh. global tonight. Uh, oh. Porto Alegre in uh, in Brazil. Uh, Medford, U.S. So nice to have you joining us tonight. Uh, Christchurch, New Zealand. Oh, Timmins in Canada. Woo. Awesome. And uh, also, greetings to, I noticed you uh, in Adler in the uh, Russian Federation and stood out to me that somebody is watching tonight from Adler because, incidentally, we named our dog Adler. <laughs> How do you like that, right? Cool. So you're just watching from the Russian Federation, and my dog is named Adler, uh, which is German for eagle, uh, because we cottage in Eagle Lake, as you know. Uh -huh. So that was that was the meaning behind the name for us, but now it has a double meaning, because I got viewers in Adler. How do you like that? That's pretty cool. Well, folks, next week. It's the battle of the webcam. Which webcam is going to work best with Telestream Wirecast for internet broadcasting? And also, uh, you're going to learn to broadcast on the cheap and keep the cost down. And to help you do that, we are finally giving away that copy of Telestream Wirecast 5 oh. Pro Edition. That's pretty good. I've laid down the hints. We've got a lot of people have submitted their ballots. I've laid down the hints. If you are from a church, if you are from a school, a business that wants to be able to broadcast their services, their assemblies, their uh, their meetings, 
if you are an internet, you know, a wannabe YouTube superstar like Kelsey here, right? You want a copy of Wirecast. It's worth a thousand bucks. So this is your opportunity, opportunity to get it absolutely free. So all you have to do is uh, pop me an email live at category5.tv. You have to put I want Wirecast in the subject line. And you have to be registered on our website, which is free category5.tv and in the body of the email I want to know what is your registered username pretty straightforward next week is the draw very excited about that happy heritage day to all of our viewers in the Yukon this week and uh, super nice to see you thank you nice to have you here thank you for being on the show you had fun yep wasn't too uh, it's kind of fast paced and yeah but we keep up I guess yep Thank you, viewers, for being so kind in the chat room and for submitting your questions tonight. Nice to see you. And great to see everybody who's watching on YouTube, Miro Internet TV, Roku, uh, all around the world through whatever platform you're watching. Thanks for joining us tonight. So I will see you next week and uh, have a great week. Bye. See ya. We hope you enjoyed the show. Category 5 TV broadcasts live from Barrie, Ontario, Canada every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. If you're watching this on demand or through cable TV, check out the local showtimes in your area at Category5.tv and find out when you can watch live and interact in the community chat room. Category 5 is a production of Prodigy Digital Solutions and is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 2.5 Canada. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. 